we'll start with the text top. Let's say I want to duplicate some word or phrase. Of course, I can do it manually, just typing it several times, but in case I have a lot to type or I'm just too lazy, I enable scripting and put it inside the quotes with space. Then just multiply. In order to fit it, we open the font tab and choose auto fit always. I'll also change the font and make it bold. Then go to the common tab to set resolution. My width will be 1280 and the height is adjustable. Let's move the stroke. Add the transform top. We should move it by x axis, but it disappears from the sides. So open the tile tab and select repeat instead of zero. To make a loop, we should move the layer from 0 to 1. We can automate it with the LFO chop. As we have a loop point at 0 and 1, we don't need our stroke to go back and forth. So let's change the wave to ramp and slow it down by decreasing the frequency. All we have to do now is to connect the operators. The one stroke is ready, but we need more of them. Of course, you can copy and paste the strokes manually anytime you want. Merge them with the layout top. Align from top to bottom and enable the scale resolution. But we can automate all this as well, which is a very nice option if we have much more strokes or we want to have an ability to adjust parameters quickly. So let's see how we can make it. The replicator component is our good friend. It can multiply the components and change their parameters. It is very devoted, but not very clever. So we have to tell it exactly what to do. Let's first group these nodes and put them into a base comp. It serves just like a folder. Add the out top and go back. Rename your base into something like text0. The replicator should know what to replicate. Drag the text base to the master operator field. Now it knows, but how many do we need? Change the replication method to by number and set the number of replicants. And now it duplicates the strokes. Let's ask it to merge them as well. Add the layout top, then null, and go to the replicator callbacks. We have to add just a single stroke. To run this code, we need to refresh the replicator. Recreate all operators. Let's change the layout parameters. Align from top to bottom. And turn on the scale resolution. Next, I want to randomize the speed of each stroke and make them move in the opposite directions. I will make it in the main text component. We already know that the frequency here defines speed, but if I change the sign, it will also affect the direction. So all we need to do is to generate a random value and change its sign every second stroke. Add the part and chop and change its type to random. Set length to 1. Now it generates a value in between 0 and 1, but I want to set a smaller range. Something like that. Each time I change the seed, it generates a different number. Let's call it speed and connect to the LFO frequency parameter. Now it works the same for every replicant, but I'd like to set a different speed parameter for each of them. Type parent 
brackets dot digits into the seed field. It will get the unique number from the name of the each replicant. To change the direction, I'll just copy and paste the part and term and change the range to negative. Then add the switch job. When I change the index, it outputs the corresponding input value, so I want it to be 0 for the odd strokes and 1 for the even. To check if the stroke is odd or even, we just have to divide it by 2 and look if the modular is 0 or not. It's easy to make with expression. 0 if parent brackets dot digits percent 2, the percent means the modular, double equals 0, else 1. That's it. Add null and connect to the LFO frequency. As you can see, when we change the number of strokes, the resolution changes as well. Add a fit top, set fit horizontal and set the resolution that you need. I'll make it vertical for this tutorial and also divide the screen to put the render on the right. In order to change the size of the text, I go inside the main text component, set two words instead of three, and adjust the height. I also want to add a space between group of words, so I'll set the border space to 100. And I'll increase the number of strokes. Keep in mind that in the layout top there is a maximum rows parameter, so we have to change it as well. I can increase the scale as well as my rows resolution width is higher than in the render. Translate a bit. Okay, we've done with this part. Add the R top. Create a base component and insert all the other operators inside of it. Go back and add RGB key top to fill the background and R top. Now add the display stop after the base text. To make it work, we have to connect an image to the second input. It will be a displacer. Add a noise stop. The amount of displays is set in the displays weight field in the displays stop. I'll set it to a smaller way. I also usually set the source displays to zero to avoid the displays that we don't need. Then in the noise top, I'll change the type to Perlin to D, decrease period to 0.6, remove harmonics, and turn off the monochrome. Let's animate the noise by going to the transform tab and typing ABS time seconds.
Now we want the displays to be only in the part of the screen where the mouse is gonna be. So let's create a circle top. Reduce the radius. And increase the softness. Some offset. Then go to the command tab and set your resolution here. This is gonna be our mask at the multiply top and connect the noise and the circle to it. Connect it to the displays. Now when we move the center of the circle, the displays change its position. It's time to connect it to the mouse. We have a mouse ink job here, you can use it if you want. It just gives you the mouse coordinates. But for me now it's not very handy, as I want to take coordinates from the render window and not the main screen. I'll use the panel. It provides you with a whole bunch of stuff here, which you can use for interactivity, but in order to make it work, we have to connect it to the container. Just zoom out to get into the upper level of the project. This is the container that we need. First, adjust the resolution. And just put a panel here. Drag the container to it. Now, if we activate the window, we'll see that we get the values. Let's replace the top viewer on the right side of the screen with the panel. We'll use the inside UV to control the coordinates of our circle. There are at least two ways of how you can propagate these coordinates, and the one you may already know. You go inside the project, create the ink job, and it creates the input where you can connect your values. To get the only needed value, we add select and choose the names of values that we need. What else you can do, since we use the select anyway, is to refer to our panel here. Let's delete it. It is one level upper, so we can type double point slash panel 1, the name of the operator that we need. And we have the same values here. We don't need any connections in this case. And move, and call it mouse coordinates. Let's connect it to the circle. The panel gives us UV values, which are from 0 to 1, and we need to convert them into screen coordinates from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. I'll use the math job. Range tab. Now it works good. To color the text, I'll create a ramp. Change the ramp type to vertical. And the multiply top. Connect the ramp to the first input of the multiply top. The displays output to the second. and set colors. So we could stop here because it looks just fine, but to emphasize the distortion zone I want to make it white with a bit of RGB delay. Add a multiply top again. The display's output goes to the first input, and the circle mask to the second. Go to the palette, image filters, 
Hard to be hate though. Add a screen top and combine our layers. Now I want to remove this part of the background with the subtract top. Connect the colorized text to the first input and the circle mask to the second. Connect it to screen. The RGB delay is very delayed now, so let's fix the values. Here we set the amount of frames to delay for each channel. I'll make it very low. Then I go to Palette again, Image Filters, Feedback. And I'll add one thin book before RGB delay and one after, so that we have a smoother RGB tail. Then the last touch. Duplicate the feedback and add it after the circle to make the movement feel more natural. So that's it. I hope you found something useful in this tutorial. See you in the next one.